at number 10, Piers Morgan. It is crazy to think that this person ruined their career because they didn't want to take someone's mental health seriously. TV presenter Piers Morgan had a lot to say after Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's bombshell interview. The insight that this royal couple shared in the interview were full of bombshell secrets and testimonies and also included some serious allegations as they showed the public a new part of themselves, looking deeper into the lives of Meghan and Harry. One person who relentlessly picked the couple's interview apart was Piers Morgan and his actual on his TV program ended his career in seconds and also led to him getting cancelled online. During the interview, Meghan Markle opened up about her mental health and how it was affected being part of the royal family, saying that there was once a point after she married into the family that she wanted to take her own life. Pierce spoke about this on air of Good Morning Britain and said that he quote, didn't believe a word she said. After Pierce made those harsh comments, he started to face massive backlash from all sides as people said that his comments on Meghan's mental health were diminishing and disrespectful. The studio he worked for, as well as Pierce himself, started receiving harsh comments and so Pierce actually decided to leave his position at Good Morning Britain. He has since refused to apologize and no one really wants to work with him after all of this drama, so it could be that his career is finished. In spot number 10 is the drama between Caitlyn Jenner and Ellen DeGeneres. It was back in 2015 when Caitlyn went on Ellen's show for an interview and it ended with an ongoing feud between them. During the interview, Ellen asked her opinion on same-sex marriage and Caitlyn said that there was a time in her life that she did not support it, but now she does. Ellen fired back immediately though and made it seem like Caitlyn was saying that she does not support the LGBTQ plus community. The tension between them seemed to go past the show because Ellen talked about it on the Howard Stern show. She told Howard that Caitlyn was unfairly passing judgment about gay people and same-sex marriage. Caitlyn later came out with her side of the story and said she was not happy that Ellen painted her in that light. She claimed that she talked to Ellen on the phone prior to going on the show in the first place and that they already discussed her changing opinion on same-sex marriage. So when Ellen flipped the switch on her during the live interview, Caitlyn was really upset. At number 10, Piers Morgan. I know that we as humans are bound to mess up sometimes, but there's no excuse for being overly critical and mean to another person, because clearly it can have its consequences, like how Piers Morgan lost his job due to the rude comments that he made on TV. Piers had a lot to say after Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's interview with Oprah. Like many others, Piers was surprised at what was said during the interview, but he took some of the information shared in the interview and used it as hateful fuel that inevitably came back to bite him. During the interview, Meghan Markle opened up about her mental health and how it was affected being part of the royal family, saying that there was once a point after marrying into the family that she wanted to take her own life. Piers spoke about this on air of Good Morning Britain and he said that he quote, didn't believe a word that she said. After Piers made those and a handful of other harsh comments, he started to face massive backlash from all sides as people said that his comments on Meghan's mental health were diminishing and disrespectful. The studio he worked for, as well as Piers himself, started receiving harsh comments and so Piers actually left his position at Good Morning Britain. He was, in a way, fired from his job, but he decided to pull the plug himself, I guess, to make him seem like the bigger person. He has since refused to apologize and since nobody wants to work with him after all this drama, it could be that- And at number 10, Lily Singh. Lily Singh started off as a YouTuber who gained immense popularity for her skits. Her career seemed to be reaching new heights every year and she was getting more recognition in traditional media. But things changed for the worse when she got her own late night show with NBC called The Little Late with Lily Singh. At first it was the most amazing opportunity that a YouTuber had ever received. And not only was she jumping into traditional media, she was also going to be the first bisexual woman of color to get a late night show. But once the show aired, it got terrible reviews. Even people that considered themselves fans of Lily's YouTube videos were forced to admit that the show was not good. The show was renewed after its first season, but did not make it past the chopping block after the second season. Lily is still working in traditional media, however she does not have the respect on YouTube or television that she had before her show debut. At number 10, Charles Rocket. Between 1980 and 1981, SNL seemed to be on its last legs. This all came about after there were some changes in staff and Gene Dumas Manion was promoted to executive producer of SNL after Lauren Michaels decided to take a break from the show. Because of this seemingly controversial change, much of the original cast of the show left, leaving Gene to rehire a brand new cast. This gave people new opportunities, but also made others lose everything that they worked for. Comedian Charles Rocket was one cast member who had their career destroyed on the show after he dropped an F-bomb during a skit. The comedian was closing out the show when he spoke some adult language, and since that is a huge no-no, it got 
him reprimanded and caused him as well as a handful of others to get fired. So not only did he destroy his career, but other members of the cast seemingly met that same fate. At number 9, Megyn Kelly Journalist Megyn Kelly once had her own show called Megyn Kelly Today, but after facing a scandal, her show was cancelled by the network effectively firing her from her job. This scandal all started when Megyn defended wearing blackface at Halloween on her morning show where she said quote, When I was a kid, that was okay just as long as you were dressing as a character. Even though she tried to apologize for her remarks, the network just didn't want to take any more risks with Megyn over fears that this would reflect badly on the company, so Megyn was fired and her show was cancelled. Now before I carry on with the list, I'd like to take a moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a big ol' like on this video if you're enjoying it so far because your support really does help the channel out. And at number 9, Chris Harrison. Bachelor Nation was in fury when a scandal took over the recent Bachelor season. It all started when a contestant's questionable past came to light and fans of the show started grabbing their pitchforks on Twitter demanding accountability. Now when Chris Harrison, the show's longtime host, tried to do some damage control, that's where things really got heated and it did not end well for him. When asked about the scandal involving a Bachelor contestant in an interview, Chris went on to seemingly defend this contestant where he said, quote, we all need to have a little grace, a little understanding, a little compassion. Because I've seen some stuff online, this judge jury executioner thing. I haven't heard Rachel speak on this yet. Until I actually hear this woman have a chance to speak, who am I to say any of this?" End quote. People found his comments to be offensive and insensitive, saying that he was too quick to defend this contestant's actions. Even though he sort of tried to justify his comments, making it so that he wasn't necessarily defending this contestant, the fans still came for blood and they got it. After everything was said and done, Chris ended up leaving the show, effectively ending his career after this one talk show interview. Now before I carry on with the list, I would like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and also maybe consider checking out my gaming channel, Viper Girl. I've got lots of fun stuff going on over there and I upload daily, so come check it out and subscribe while you're there. Cruising into number 9 is the Wendy Williams lip drama. She caused a big stir online after she talked about the Golden Globes on her talk show. It was because she started making comments about the awards show and began talking about the Oscar nominated actor Joaquin Phoenix. But while talking about him, she mocked the scar that he has above his lip. She said that when he shaves his mustache, he has a hairline fracture, and then she started demonstrating with her hand how his lip scar looks like a cleft lip. People were furious and said she was insensitive not only to the actor, but also those who have cleft lips. Even Cher was furious and had a lot to say about it on Twitter. One of her tweets said an apology does not make up for what she did, and the other one said that she she should be fired for making fun of something that is very painful for some people. Wendy did issue an apology following all the backlash, in case you're wondering, um, but is that enough? I don't know. She still has her job, so I guess so. And at number 9, Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin is one of the most controversial comedians ever, because she doesn't shy away from touchy subjects like religion and politics. And it seems that her bad reputation has trickled over to some of her peers, and as a result, she's been banned from countless talk shows over the years. I think she might have broken a record from one of the most banned people ever. She's been blacklisted from The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, The View, Ellen, Today, and The Late Show with David Letterman. The story of why she was axed from Letterman is the most insane. While she was on the show doing a live interview, she decided to start undressing. She got so naked that the crowd, as well as those at home, saw her bra, stomach, and the fact that she wasn't wearing any underwear. At number 9, Jimmy Fallon. Last year, people were cancelling celebrities left, right, and center for a bunch of different things. We had Ellen and her backstage drama, we had Leah Michelle and her Hollywood mean streak, and we also had Jimmy Fallon because after a clip of the late night host in blackface resurfaced on the internet, the fiery hordes on Twitter came looking for vengeance. The clip in question came from a bit that Jimmy was doing as an impersonation of Chris Rock back in 2000. Because this all came about during the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement last summer, people were extra mad at Jimmy and some thought that his career was over after this. But much like many other scandals online, this all blew over after Jimmy issued an apology and took accountability for his actions. Do you guys remember the scandal and do you think that his career should have been over after this? Let me know your thoughts down below. Now before I care on the list, I would like to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far. And if you're interested in gaming content, consider checking out my gaming channel, Viper Girl. There's lots of fun content for you guys.
guys who enjoy over there, so check it out and subscribe while you're there. At number 8, Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons is certainly someone with little or no filter when it comes to his words and actions. He's an outlandish guy with a lot of energy, and so sometimes when he gets passionate or heated, then he can go off the rails a bit and that can come back to bite him as it resulted in him losing his job with Fox. At one point, the singer was a Fox favorite, making regular appearances on their programming where they would discuss hot topics in the world and would share their opinions on things. They seemed to really like him and enjoyed having him on their talk show, but after causing a stir at a meeting with Fox and making some crude comments towards some of the other staff members, Gene was banned for life and was fired from their show. Some of the things that Gene said to some women at the network got leaked and it made the studio look bad, so they just had to let him go. In this day and age, making comments like that is sure to get you in some serious trouble and for some- At number 8, Sinead O'Connor. SNL is one of the most popular and successful variety slash talk shows out there, and because it's so popular, things can often go wrong with so many people watching and so much on the line for people's careers. One of the biggest scandals to come from SNL is probably the one involving Sinead O'Connor and how she called out the Catholic Church during a performance in 1992 that effectively destroyed her career. On this episode, Sinead was asked to perform a few songs for her newest album at the time, and though she agreed, there was a little fine print to accompany her appearance. Sinead asked to perform a rendition of Bob Marley's song, War, instead of a piece from her own album. That night, she got up on stage, sang the song, changed up the context of some of the lines, and made a bold statement at the end after she held up a photo of Pope John Paul II and tore it up in a show of defiance against the Catholic Church. She did all this as a means to raise awareness about some of the allegations that were against the Catholic Church because she had personal experience with those who were allegedly hurt by members of said church, and she wanted to fight against it. This stunt angered a lot of people because for days following the performance, NBC received thousands of angry calls condemning them for allowing something like this to happen. Other celebrities like Madonna and Joe Pesci also had some harsh words for Sinead. After that event, no one wanted to work with her ever again, and her career pretty much went down the tubes soon after. In spot number eight, we have the time when Paris Hilton called out David Letterman. I did an entire list of celebrities who tried to warn us about David Letterman, so there is a handful of scandals that I could have used, but the one with Paris is what sparked the majority of them to be revealed in the first place. In 2020, Paris did a vulnerable documentary called This Is Paris, where she opened up about different times that she was being little during interviews by other people in the industry, David being one of them. One video clip surfaced online showing him bugging her about her time in jail, which happened years before. He kept making very insensitive jokes about it, and even after she asked him to stop, he wouldn't. Paris revealed that he was purposely trying to humiliate her because he agreed not to bring up the jail thing before she even went on the show in the first place. After the clip went viral, a handful of other clips with different female celebrities surfaced, showing him belittling them and also being sexually inappropriate appropriate towards them. And then number 8, Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant ruined his career in a number of ways. I think him cheating in public with a sex worker was probably the most famous, but his bad reputations on late night shows definitely did not help. Jon Stewart had such a bad interaction with the actor that he decided to ban Grant from his late night show back in 2009. Apparently Hugh was incredibly rude while he was on the show, cursing and complaining about pretty much everything. Hugh somewhat tried to set the record straight about things and admitted that he was in a terrible mood the day he was on set, tweeting quote, turns out my inner crab got the better of me with TV producer in 09. Unforgivable, Jay Stewart is correct to give me kicking. So I mean, at least he is, knows that he deserved it. At number 8, Jenny Slate. Imagine the worst first day you've ever had. Now after I tell you about Jenny Slate's first day on SNL, I want you to see if your first day is as bad as hers, because Jenny's first day ended her career before it really got a chance to start. Though she's successful now, her career had been delayed for a bit after she goofed up on SNL on her first night as a cast member. Back in 2009, Jenny got the chance to perform one of the sketches that she wrote called Biker Chit Chat. She knew the bit liked the back of her hand, or at least she thought she did, because when she went to say one of her lines, she made it a little more adult by accidentally switching up one of the words and dropping an F-bomb in its place. We all know that on network television, and especially on shows like this, having adult dialogue is a serious no-no, and so when Jenny dropped that big ol' F, it was not good for her at all. After that night, Jenny struggled to fit the show's vibe, at least that's what she claimed to say. The F-bomb combined with some other behind-the-scenes stuff caused her to get fired from one of the most famous shows on TV, and that definitely held her back in comedy for a little bit, but clearly not forever. At number 7, Adrian Brody. 
Adrian Brody is a super successful actor, but after a scandal while hosting Saturday Night Live in 2003, his potential hosting career began and ended all in one night. When Adrian was hired to host SNL one evening, one of the tasks he was given that night was introducing the musical guest for the evening. Seems like a pretty simple enough task, but he still managed to mess it up. On the night that Adrian was hosting, the musical guest turned out to be Sean Paul, and Adrian saw this as the perfect opportunity to introduce Sean in an interesting way to say the least. When it came down to announcing Sean's performance, Adrian came out dressed in fake dreadlocks and sporting a Jamaican accent. His bit was called out and was seen as offensive and uncalled for as he went completely off script to do this bit, but no one found it funny in the slightest. Man, Jamaica, man, you know, you know, rush stuff, all right, you know, you got the old family in the house, you know. You know, we got, we got Sean Peter, you know, we got Sean Paul, we got Sean Mary. Because this was such an epic and controversial fail, the actor was subsequently fired and banned from coming back on the show. He faced a lot of backlash that hurt his image for a while, but clearly he's bounced back since then. At number 7, Carmen. For people trying to make it big in Hollywood and in the music industry, the idea is to get yourself in front of as many people as possible to build up your reputation. So when you're asked to be a judge on a talk show, that is a huge deal, but only if it goes smoothly and for the music duo Carmen, that is certainly not what happened because after a botched SNL performance, their career was over. Carmen, though now disbanded and rebranded, was a music duo who got their start on YouTube by posting covers of a lot of popular songs like Party Rock Anthem and Super Bass. Eventually, they got a large following, leading them to getting noticed by casting director over at SNL. They invited the duo to perform on the show and they sang a couple songs but after the show, when the ratings came in, it wasn't looking good for Carmen. They got some pretty harsh reviews and this completely tanked their career. One critic even said that their performance caused quote, mild auditory distress. They were never really able to bounce back from this catastrophe of a performance and so they eventually faded away, ending their careers. Taking over number seven is Steve Harvey's note. He was making headlines in 2017 when a memo he sent off to his staff members was leaked online, showing him in a different light. People are used to seeing his very kind and goofy side, but apparently he is more entitled when he is off camera. The memo was sent from Harvey to his staff and basically told them all not to approach him. It said, do not come to my dressing room unless invited. Do not approach me while I'm in the makeup chair unless I ask to speak with you directly. Do not take offense to the new way of doing business. Turns out he was revamping things for season five of his show and with a new crew, he wanted new rules. After the memo went viral, he decided to bail on the rap party for his own show. <laughs> Probably because the staff all were terrified to even look at him. What do you guys think? Does he have a right to say that in a staff memo? Like, do you think it was too much? Do you think it's valid? Let me know. And number seven, Joan Rivers. Near the beginning of Joan's long and successful career, she frequently appeared on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. But when Joan got her own show with Fox, Carson was not happy with her, and their friendship sadly ended. At the time, she made history for being the first woman to ever host a late night show. But unfortunately, the show wasn't very good, and it ended shortly after it started. And when Joan tried to get back on Johnny Carson's show, he actually rejected her and banned her from ever coming back on his show. At the time, this was a huge blow to her budding career, with some thinking it was the beginning of the end. The band even continued when the show changed hands and Jay Leno took over in 1992. But thankfully, she managed to find work elsewhere and the band made a little difference on her work. At number seven, David Letterman. When celebrities get exposed for some type of scandal, it's a big deal and it can be career altering. So when David Letterman exposed his own cheating scandal on his late night talk show, things were serious and some didn't know if he would ever bounce back from this bombshell. In October 2009, on his late night talk show, David Letterman exposed his affair and revealed to the public that he had been intimately involved with someone from the studio. He also revealed that the reason why he was publicly addressing his affair was because someone was threatening to blackmail him for $2 million. He then told his audience about the mysterious package he found in his car one day and how his blackmailer had demanded to be paid off in order to keep his information from the public and from his wife. Rather than pay up, he owned up to his actions, but this was still a big deal because it was revealed that his mistress actually worked for him. Because this was a huge story, some wondered what it meant for the future of Letterman's show and career, but after some scrutiny, he was able to stay afloat for a little longer. It didn't destroy him, but it almost did. At number six, Gene Simmons. I think we can all agree that Gene Simmons is somewhat of an outlandish guy. He's a guy with a lot of energy and no filter, so when it comes to sitting down with him live, you never know what he might say, but you can only hope that it won't be too offensive. At one point, the singer was a Fox favorite, making regular appearances on their programming, where 
they would discuss hot topics in the world and would share their opinions on things. They liked the guy and liked having him on their talk show, but after causing a stir during a meeting at Fox and making crude comments towards some of the other staff members, Gene got banned for life and it was a hot topic of its own. Some of the things that Gene said to some of the women at the network got leaked and it's not nice at all. In this day and age, making comments like that is sure to get you in some serious trouble and for a celebrity that is never good because that can cost you your entire career. At number 6, Jenny Slate. The first day at a new job is always a very stressful one. There's a lot of pressure to do well and start to fit into your new work environment, so usually employers forgive any kind of minor mistakes, but for comedian Jenny Slake, the mistake that she made on her first day was a bit of a doozy and she ended up getting fired for it. Back in 2009, during her first performance as a cast member on the show, Jenny got the chance to perform one of the sketches that she wrote. She knew the bit like the back of her hand, or at least she thought she did, because when she went to go say one of her lines, she accidentally switched up one of the words and dropped an accidental F bomb in its place. We all know that on network television, especially on talk shows like this, having adult language is a serious no-no, and when Jenny messed up, it just was not good for her at all. After that night, Jenny just struggled to fit the show's vibe, at least that's what she went on to say. The F-bomb combined with her other behind the scenes stuff caused her to get fired from one of the most famous shows on TV, and that definitely held her back in the comedy world for a little while, but clearly not forever. At number 6, Bill Mayer. We should all know by now that language has the ability to do a lot. It can be good for when you're making positive changes, but it can also come back to bite you if you say something that isn't so nice. Some people, however, aren't very conscious of this and their harsh and sometimes offensive language can cause them to face massive backlash and can even end their career. Take talk show host Bill Mayer, for example. On his HBO show Real Time with Bill Mayer, he dropped the N-word while talking to Senator Bill Sass, and as you could imagine, it did not end well for him. During his interview, the senator told Bill that he would like to invite him to Nebraska and quote, have you work in the fields with us? To that, Bill replied, scoffing at the idea, saying, quote, I'm not a house N-word. After those words were uttered, the fury came from the public, condemning his use of that word. Bill claimed to have been using the word in a joking manner, but that still doesn't take away from the gravity of uttering that word in the first place. Bill was subsequently ripped apart by his audience and even other late night personalities like Stephen Colbert. After this scandal, his career was never really the same because many people aren't quick to forget these things. At number 6, we have James Corden facing backlash for allegedly being racist. This scandal caused a huge debate because some people felt he should be cancelled while others saw no issue with what he was doing. I will let you be your own judge. If you haven't seen his show, he does a segment called Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts. He fills the table with disgusting foods like cow tongue, different bugs, a thousand year old eggs, sardine smoothies, things like that. If his celebrity guest does not want to answer the question, they have to eat whatever is in front of them. He's been doing it for years, but this year he started taking heat after people said some of the foods that he refers to as disgusting are very common in Asian cultures. People said that the segment is culturally offensive and insensitive because many Asian Americans are consistently bullied and mocked for their native foods. James was quick to apologize though and be very understanding, saying that he will not do the segment and he will make appropriate changes to his show. And at number 6, Billy Bush. Billy Bush was placed in charge of an interview with businessman Donald Trump in 2005, back when Trump was famous for shows like The Apprentice. But an X-rated conversation from before the interview was leaked to the public during Trump's run for office, and crazy enough, it hardly made a difference in his popularity. However, the interview seemed to derail Bush's career. In 2016, after the tape was suspiciously leaked allegedly by an employee of NBC, Bush was actually fired by the network. Not sure if they thought he was like responsible in some way. According to Page Six, this may or may not have been part of the network's plan, though it was pretty clear that they were trying to derail Trump's presidential run. After the derogatory comments made in the tape were revealed, it seems that Bush is the person that paid the price. At number 5, Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody is a super successful actor, but after a scandal while hosting Saturday Night Live in 2003, there could have been a chance that his career would have been well and truly over. Back then, cancel culture wasn't yet a thing, but if it was, Adrian would have had his own over party trending on Twitter. When hosting SNL, the person tasked with being the host that evening is responsible for introducing the musical guest for that evening. On the night that Adrian was hosting, the musical guest happened to be Sean Paul, and Adrian saw this as a perfect opportunity 
opportunity to introduce Sean in an interesting way to say the least. When it came down to introducing Sean's performance, Adrian came out dressed in fake dreadlocks and sporting a Jamaican accent. His bit was called out and was seen as very offensive and uncalled for as he went off script to do this bit, which no one found funny in the slightest. Because this was such an epic and controversial fail, the actor was subsequently banned from coming back on the show. He faced a lot of backlash that for his image for a while, but clearly he's bounced back since then. At number 5, Alec Baldwin. Back in 2013, Alec Baldwin became the host of a late night talk show called Up Late with Alec Baldwin on MSNBC. But his career as a talk show host was very short lived as the show was promptly cancelled after just 5 episodes because Alex landed himself in a scandal that got him fired from the network. Alec had been exposed for getting into a heated brawl with paparazzi where he went on a bit of a homophobic rant, which as you can imagine made Alec as well as the network look bad. Luckily for him, the only thing that really took a beating was his late night career since his acting career remained relatively steady after this scandal. He got lucky that he only got fired from one job and not all of them. At number 5, Sharon Osbourne Talk show host Sharon Osbourne found herself in some hot water earlier this year after she made some comments about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry that not only caused her to get backlash but also lose a friend. Sharon Osbourne and Cheryl Underwood got into a heated argument surrounding Pierce Morgan's remarks about Meghan Markle. During this feud, Sharon backed up Pierce's comments about Meghan Markle's mental health and this frustrated Cheryl because she didn't like the comments that were being made about those involved. The two got into a very heated debate and ended with a lot of drama and sparking a conversation about Sharon's ideals. She was called a racist and a number of other accusations came out about her and how she's used various slurs in the past when talking about her other co-hosts. As a result of this, the network for their show launched an internal investigation that ended with Sharon being let go from the show. Sharon had been part of the show for so long that her firing certainly altered her career quite a lot. We've made it halfway and we have Megyn Kelly versus Jane Fonda. In September 2017, what started out as a normal interview led to some ongoing tension between these two ladies. They were having a normal interview which seemed to be going well until Megyn started asking Jane about aging and plastic surgery. It seemed to strike a nerve with her because she became irritated immediately and did not want to talk about it. She fired back at her saying, we really want to talk about that now? Then she changed the subject and began talking about her movie, Our Souls at Night. The interview just wasn't the same after that. You could feel like some awkward tension between them. Jane later joked about it months later on the Today Show and Megan replied by saying the actress is fixated on the exchange and said it was part of Jane's poor me routine. Things just seemed to get even worse from there. <laughs> just went on a spiral and a rant. And it's just not good. Halfway number five, Caitlyn Jenner. The infamous interview that Caitlyn Jenner did with Ellen DeGeneres completely changed the way that people looked at Caitlyn, and it caused many in the LGBT community to retract their support for her. The interview was so bad that Caitlyn was even blacklisted from Ellen's show afterward. In her memoir, Secrets of My Life, Caitlyn called out Ellen specifically for, quote, alienating her from the LGBTQ community by not allowing Caitlyn to come on her show. However, it's clear that Caitlyn alienated herself. During the 2015 interview, Ellen asked about Caitlyn's stance on gay marriage. Caitlin replied that she was originally not for gay marriage many years ago, adding quote, if that word marriage is important to you, I can go with it. And from Caitlin's tone, it didn't seem genuine to Ellen. Ellen even pointed out Caitlin's blatant hypocrisy. At number four, Ashley Simpson. This was the moment that caused Ashley Simpson's career to crumble and things haven't been the same since. I'm sure you all know the story about how Ashley was caught lip syncing during her SNL performance and how embarrassing it was. This was a defining moment for Ashley because she she was supposed to be getting her name out there to gain more notoriety and to grow her music career, but after this slip up on the show, Ashley's name has been associated more with SNL fails than with the music industry, which is pretty unfair since she still brushed herself off after that incident and continued forward. Yes, this appearance pretty much destroyed her career, but she didn't let that stop her, which is good. At number 4, Leah Remini Actress Leah Remini, known for her work on sitcoms like The King of Queens and Kevin Can Wait, was also a host on the talk show The Talk, but that career was pretty short lived because she just didn't mesh well with her fellow co hosts. In an interview with Howard Stern, Leah talked about how she was fired from the show because, quote, she refused to keep her mouth shut. Leah said that she was just doing what she thought was right for her on the show, but the producers thought differently and this led to her losing her job. Her career still remained intact after being let go from the show, though, so things certainly could have been worse for the actress. We just know that she might not be invited to be a talk show host again anytime soon. In her fair share of controversies, including one that also happened while on a talk show, that kind of ruined her career. During an episode of The View, Kelly Osbourne really missed the mark while trying to clap back at Donald Trump, and even though she was trying to diss Trump, 
Um, she ended up getting in enough trouble for herself. Just shortly before this episode aired, Donald Trump, who was at the time only a presidential nominee, was saying offensive things about the Latinx community and how he wanted to deport them. I am sure we are all too familiar with this whole concept. Well, in a very poor attempt at clapping back at Trump's racist comments, Kelly said, quote, if you kick every Latino out of this country, then who's going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? What Kelly was trying to do was defend the Latinx community, but rather than stand up for them, she ended up offending them even more, as her remarks were interpreted as saying that the Latinx community is only good for being housekeepers, as depicted in many racial stereotypes. After facing so much backlash and realizing the gravity of her words, Kelly issued an apology saying, quote, I want to start by saying I always take responsibilities for my actions. In this particular case, I will take responsibility for my poor choice of words, but I will not apologize for being a racist as I am not. End quote. Kelly completely missed the mark on that one, and it certainly hurt her career. Rolling into spot number four, we have Sharon Osbourne gets fired. Well, she was forced to step away, so you could say she kind of quit. Things turned sour quick when she went on the show and defended Piers Morgan, who gave his opinion about Meghan Markle's big interview regarding the royal family. His opinion was that he didn't believe Meghan's very serious claims. Sharon defended him, saying that he has a right to speak about his views and opinion, but that just caused issues for her because it came off like she was kind of agreeing with him. She tried to defend herself, but it ended up turning into a very heated argument between her and one of her other show hosts. The show had to cut to commercial and bleep out a bunch of F-bombs because the fight got so intense. The show was on a hiatus before it was announced that they would be moving forward without her. The show's statement said that her behavior towards her co-hosts did not align with their values for a respectful workplace. And at number four, Michael Richards. The legendary Seinfeld actor got serious backlash after he called a member of the audience the N-word because this person was heckling him during a stand-up routine. In 2006, Michaels tried to revitalize his image by apologizing for the comments on The Late Show with David Letterman. However, it seems the apology was not taken well because his career took a nosedive after the appearance. Since this incident, Richards has only appeared in two roles, one on Curb Your Enthusiasm and another on Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. At number three, Chris Brown. Chris Brown seems to have gone on a journey to turn his life around after the incident that happened between him and Rihanna in 2009. After that moment, the public saw him very differently and the singer was left picking up the pieces of his broken career. Things were rough for him in the years following the incident because the media labeled him as hot headed and this wasn't a good look for him, especially when he acted on said hot headedness. In 2011, two years after the Rihanna incident, Chris Brown was a guest on Good Morning America and sat down with Robin Roberts for an interview to discuss his new album and to perform a song from said album. The interview and performance went sort of according to plan, but during his time on camera you could see Chris getting angry after Robin kept asking about his altercation with Rihanna. Chris kept trying to get her back on the topic of the album, but it didn't really work and he got really upset. As soon as the interview and performance were over, Chris stormed off the stage, took his shirt off and threw a chair at a window, causing it to shatter and rain glass onto the street below. This interview made Chris look even worse in the eyes of the public and it continued to affect his career negatively. At number three, Charles Rocket. Between 1980 and 1981, SNL seemed to be on its way out, despite having been one of the biggest shows on TV. This all came after there were changes in staff, and this caused some drama because much of the cast weren't happy with the new changes being put in place. Because of this seemingly controversial change, much of the original cast of the show left, leading the new producer to have to rehire a brand new cast. This was great for new up and coming comedians because it gave new people new opportunities, but it also made others lose everything they worked for. Comedian Charles Rocket was one cast member who had their career destroyed on the show after he dropped an F-bomb during a skit. The comedian was closing out the show when he spoke some adult language and since this is a huge no-no, he got reprimanded for it and it caused him as well as a handful of others to get fired from the show. So he not only got himself fired, but many other cast and crew members as well, greatly affecting a lot of careers. At number three, Paula Deen. At one point, we all thought that Paula Deen was just a sweet southern mom who liked butter a little too much, but after 2013, she took on a very different label as she was exposed for being pretty racist following a lawsuit that showed the world what she was like behind the scenes. After being deposed, the truth came out after Paula was asked if she had ever used the N-word, and she said yes. 
This certainly was not good for her image, so she went on damage control to really take the heat off her, but instead of getting things to die down faster, her appearance on the Today Show caused things to get so much worse. Instead of owning up to her actions and trying to clear her name, as most people would try to do in that kind of situation, Paula instead deflected the criticism she was facing and even voiced how shocked she was that so many people were taking offense to her actions. The fact that she didn't even take accountability for her actions rubbed a lot of people the wrong way and just ended up making the situation so much worse for her and pretty much ended her career after that. With that being said, at number three is Piers Morgan gets fired. You already heard the gist of what happened, but there was a lot of drama that led to him quitting the show, but media outlets say he was forced to step away. I feel like that's a nice way of saying, you're fired, I'm gonna give you opportunity to quit. If, if not, you're fired. He has been adored on the talk show Good Morning Britain, but then ITV announced they were getting a lot of complaints about Piers and they had to investigate them. Turns out the show received 41,000 complaints after Piers said he did not believe a word that Meghan Markle said in her Oprah Winfrey interview about the royal family. If you missed that very shocking interview, Meghan revealed how her mental health was negatively affected by the royal family and brought up certain incidents which were extremely racist and insensitive. Piers was open about the fact that he personally did not believe her claims. He ended up walking away from the show, which seemed to be a mutual agreement with the network either way, because they could not defend or protect his comments. And at number three, David Letterman. Recently, David Letterman has received a lot of flack for his past interviews, specifically for being inappropriate while interviewing his female guests. But there is another overlooked controversy involving Letterman that almost derailed his career. In 2009, Letterman got on television and told his unsuspecting viewers that he was being blackmailed. Apparently, this person knew that Letterman was having sexual relationships with his coworkers and wanted $2 million to keep the secret to himself. However, Letterman did not participate in the blackmail and decided to air his dirty laundry out to the public. After working with the police, they discovered the person was producer Joe Halderman. Many were shocked that Letterman was sleeping with members of his staff, which is incredibly unethical because of his position of power. He seemed to get off the hook pretty easily, but that behavior definitely would not have stood today. At number two, T.I. Back in November of 2019, rapper T.I. was a guest on a talk show podcast called Ladies Like Us Podcast. Here, the rapper opened up about his daughter, his relationship to her, and how he monitors his daughter's virginity. Yes, you heard that right. The rapper opened up about how he takes his daughter to a yearly gyno appointment to quote, make sure her hymen is still intact, end quote. A woman's hymen is commonly associated with her virginity, even though there are many other ways it can be broken other than sex, but clearly T.I. didn't know that, and after telling a large audience about how he's so concerned about his daughter's purity, he faced a lot of backlash and was canceled for a bit. Going more in depth into how these appointments go down, the rapper told the podcast audience that he had to fight the doctor to get his daughter's results because it was private information, but even after all of that drama wanting to make sure that things were to his standard, T.I. later went on to comment on people who haven't been intimate, saying, quote, who wants a virgin? Like, really, all that work. At number two, Ellen. Now, I know you guys are gonna head into the comments right now and say, well, Ellen didn't get fired, and I know that, but she did kind of fire herself when she announced that she would be ending her show. She's laying herself off because she's taking away her own job. Last year in 2020, we watched the comedian and talk show host fall rapidly from Grace as allegation after allegation came out, painting her as a nightmare to work with, among other things. She faced so much backlash for months for things like the treatment of her staff, her comments about lockdown, and the Black Lives Matter movement. Because of the events of last year, she lost a lot of credibility and respect in the industry, and her show lost a lot of ratings and advertisers as well, leading to her making the decision to end her talk show after so many years. So yeah, no one officially fired her, but she kind of just fired herself. At number two, James Corden. Recently, TV host James Corden has found himself in trouble with fans after his Spill Your Guts segment from the show started facing backlash with fans. Fans are calling for James to take accountability after he made some comments about some Asian foods that he had on the show because some fans thought this was really offensive. Because the foods that they use in the Spill Your Guts segment are supposed to be ones that you wouldn't want to eat, the fact that some Asian foods like balut were used and called, quote, disgusting, made a lot of people take to the internet to call for accountability 
and an apology from James Corden. Apparently, James has been making these types of comments about a lot of different Asian dishes on a few occasions, so some people have said enough is enough, and some have even created a petition calling for the removal of the Spill Your Guts segment. Since James has been facing cancellation for this lately, do you think his career is in serious jeopardy, or do you think this will all blow over without any repercussions? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Moving on to number two, we have Jimmy Kimmel's insensitive comment. During one of his episodes in 2013, he offended the Chinese community around the world after making an insensitive joke. During one of his segments, a child suggested that harming everyone in China as a solution to dealing with America's growing debt. Jimmy responded to it by saying, that's an interesting idea. The statement enraged a lot of people, even if it was meant to be a joke or sarcasm, and people online were demanding an apology from him. Eventually, Jimmy released a statement saying, I thought it was obvious that I didn't agree with that statement, but apparently it wasn't. So I just want to say I am sorry, I apologize, it was certainly not my intent to upset anyone. I feel like he just chose to use sarcasm at a very bad time. Like sarcasm either hits or it misses. And at number two, Alan Carr. This one's honestly hilarious, but it was a bit too cheeky for many people's taste. While Kim Kardashian was on Alan Carr's show, they were speaking about her butt and why everyone believes that it's fake. Kim even showed Alan the pictures of the x ray she got on the show, proving that there are no implants in her butt. Kim then decided to get a little cheeky and let Alan Carr actually grab her butt so he could feel if it was real. The moment was very brief and they both took it like a champ, but out of context, it looks really bad. Bad. After the grab, Carr told Kim, quote, If I had a bum like yours, I would walk into a room backwards. How honored are you when people say you have the best bum in the world? Kim blamed it on her Armenian jeans, pointing out that all her sisters are curvy. And finally, at number one, Kathy Lee Gifford. Sometimes when celebrities are being interviewed, their words can become a topic of debate and they can even get canceled for it. But here's a case where the person interviewing came under fire and it seriously affected their career and how people viewed them. Kathy Lee Gifford, best known for her time on Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, faced a lot of backlash after her Today Show interview with Martin Short caused quite a stir. Back in 2012, Martin sat down for an interview with Kathy to discuss his role in the film Madagascar 3, and during the interview, Kathy kept asking Martin about his wife. What she didn't realize at the time was the fact that his wife Nancy had actually passed away two years earlier after a battle with ovarian cancer. The interview was super cringe because you could tell that with every question about his wife, Kathy struck a nerve, but she did learn about her mistakes afterwards as Martin informed her of his wife's passing backstage. Kathy's comments were seen as insensitive by a lot of people and even though she says it was an honest mistake, we already know that the public and cancel culture don't really care about that. And finally, at number one, Sharon Osbourne. Talk show host Sharon Osbourne faced a lot of backlash a few months ago after making comments about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Sharon and her former co-host Cheryl Underwood got into a heated argument surrounding Pierce Morgan's remarks about Meghan Markle. During this feud, Sharon backed up some of Pierce's comments about Meghan's mental health, and this really frustrated a lot of people because many felt as though what was being said was going a little too far. As a result of the remarks that Sharon made, she was called a racist, and a number of other accusations came out about how she's used various slurs in the past when talking about her other co-hosts on the show. Show. As a result of this, the network she worked for launched an internal investigation to look into the allegations against Sharon, and it all ended with Sharon being let go from the show. Now, I want to know if you guys have ever been fired from a job. If you have, what was the reason and how did you feel about it? Tell me about all of your stories down in the comments. And finally, at number one, Ellen DeGeneres. The number one person on this list who ruined their career on a talk show is no doubt Ellen DeGeneres. In 2020, we watched the comedian and talk show host fall rapidly from grace as allegations after allegation came out, painting Ellen as a nightmare to work with, among other things. She faced so much backlash from things like the treatment of her staff to comments about lockdown and the Black Lives Matter movement. Because of the events of last year, she lost a lot of credibility and respect in the industry, and her show lost a lot of ratings and advertisers as well. She really lost everything and has recently announced that her show will be ending after this last season, making it seem like her career is well and truly over. Earning the number one spot is the feud between Dakota Johnson and Ellen Generous. 
This has gone down as one of the most iconic and cringeworthy moments in talk show history. In 2019, a feud sparked between the two of them after Dakota went on her show to do an interview. At the time, they had already had this ongoing debate on whether or not Ellen had been invited to her birthday party. In 2018, Dakota admitted she did not invite Ellen because she didn't know if she would want to be invited. So in 2019, she did invite her. But Ellen did not show up to the party and also did not give any explanation why. So when Dakota went on her talk show, Ellen brought it up and accused her of not inviting her to her birthday again. The tension was immediately super uncomfortable as Dakota starts bringing other people into it. She said, I quote, Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. Ask everybody. Ask Jonathan, your producer. She literally then points to the producer and calls him out during the interview. The producer revealed that she was in fact invited and then it was super awkward because Ellen didn't even say why she didn't go and then the audience had just had to sit there and watch the whole thing unfold. And finally, number one, Andy Dick. Comedian Andy Dick got incredibly inappropriate well on Jimmy Kimmel Live and he was kicked off the show as a result. Dick was on the show the same time as Ivanka Trump, the famous daughter of Donald Trump. Throughout the interview, Andy got incredibly inappropriate with Ivanka, touching her leg out of nowhere multiple times. After Andy was getting too handsy, Kimmel decided to get his security to kick Andy off the show. And mind you, this was mid-interview, so the whole thing was caught on camera. The whole thing seemed to be kind of a joke, but it was clear that Andy went way too far. I'm sure many fans lost a lot of respect for him after that.